happen. But it's really interesting when you actually break down seawater is that man cannot produce seawater. Mm, that's weird. Yeah. You, no, can't, and, you can't just get the composition of it. No, right. man, man has not been able to produce seawater. and That's mind-blowing when you really think about it. Yeah, they cannot yeah. do it. So it, it needs a biological function to actually create seawater. Right, which tells you that we're trying to make something that isn't alive. Yes, that's right. So it's alive. Seawater is yeah. alive. Yeah. And so, you know, Murray talked about this process of how everything was so healthy and that. And after being to the States um, and working with Brookside and seeing probably some of the lands, you know, some of the amazing mineralized soils that they have – um, from glacial moraines, and that's certainly out of an inland sea and right through the Midwest. When they applied some of these products back into it, and they had an amazing result, I'm not surprised because the minerals would have been there, but he was reintroducing a biology, and which it took quite some time for me to fully understand. And I, I didn't say fully understand. God, it's a, just such a long-winded mm. subject. But mm. this is where the cyanobacteria otherwise known as blue-green algae or whatever, the, the healthy ones that come out of the ocean. They're the greatest photosynthesizer on the planet. They're the biggest carbon accumulator. They're, they're everything. And they live in everywhere, but they can't handle chemicals. They, they are just, they can't handle chemicals at all. They'll handle minus 40 degrees and they'll handle plus 70. And as soon as the condition's right, they'll reproduce at a hell of a rate of knots, but they cannot handle chemicals. Wow. Can you explain the significance of the comp the comparison between ocean mammals and land animals in this research? Well, this is the thing: is like they were exposed to living in seawater, which is fully comprehended blood in a sense. It's like seawater is the same as our bodies and the blood in our bodies. And here they are, the fish are swimming around in this a fully mineralized, healthy, and then they come to freshwater, and it's not. Now, there's healthier freshwater places than than other freshwater places. I mean, yeah. water has a huge amount of different qualities about it. So you could see, well, okay, if it's mineralized that way, nature's built it that way, and then if you start looking at where were the healthiest places on, well, certainly in this country to start with, they were always on the marine flats. So there was an, always an influence of the ocean at some stage into what was growing in the biology and into what grew from that. So there was always a connection to the ocean, to this health. It didn't happen, you know, just by accident. And then even to the point of watching animals on, you know, around Tai Happy, Radahi, Wanganui, you know, the, it's all papa country. It's all come up from underneath the ocean. You know, it's incredibly healthy country uh, originally um, and you know, like even though it was rough as guts, they used to cut all the timber down and they grew some hellish and good sheep and cattle in there. Wow. Um, and, you know, right down the east coast of the um, North Island, you know, specifically out around Gisborne and that, you know, it's all pushed up sea seafloor, hmm. which, you know, over a time frame, it, it'd be great to actually put a, a, a picture where you could actually see it happen. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Were you going to say... I thought you were going to say over time frame, how long does it take to deplete it of those minerals for the for the land animals? Well, I think it's you, your biggest thing is you've depleted the mechanism and the health of it mm. by what we're adding into it, and then as opposed to stripping it of things, you're depleting of uh, depleting it of its ability to give you those things. That's right. Right. Yeah. No, they haven't really gone anywhere. I mean, that's what the total soil test does all the time. Is that we keep showing up and going? No, they're still there. Right. And you've just changed the form that the biology can get at, or you've brought aluminium out to play. That's the other big, big no-no of cyanobacteria mm. is aluminium. And I mean, you, the population goes and buys this shit at the supermarket is underarm, mm. antiperspirant. Why is it? A, why is the active ingredient ingredient in these antiperspirants? Oh, it's aluminium sulfate because aluminium kills bacteria. And so as soon as you go into your soils and you lift the aluminium content, well, it kills the cyanobacteria. Mm. And so as soon as you put a chemical on it, it's a plant. It's an organism. It's like, it, boom, gone. Mm. And, you know, products like Roundup, they're, uh, um, they're, they're just, they're not only kill weeds and everything like that, but they're um, antibiotic. It's an antibiotic. 
Yeah, that's a strange concept to hear that for the first time, that it's an antibiotic. Yeah, so it, yeah. it just kills the shit off. And then that, that is what need, is needed to actually start this life cycle and the process. Mm. So, yeah. So what motivated you to try using seawater as a fertilizer? I could get it for nothing. Yeah. I could, I'd be down the beach. You know, like I was nothing to go down the beach and grab some seawater. I'm reading Maynard's Murray. I say, this is yeah. pretty exciting shit. And for nothing? Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So how did the initial trials go? Oh, they were they were great. And actually when I look back on them, then I had to actually really take a take two step because the original marine clay that I got for putting on for making the electrical activity and I got from Kaiawa, it obviously had seawater and cyanobacteria and I actually was seeing the same results and going, Ah oh, okay. it took a while for me to I was a bit thick, I think. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like the results were quite phenomenal. Um, you could see the squares and I, and I just used the paddock out from the house and I was just looking out the window and going, oh, shit, I can see that. Mm. And, you know, as I spoke about in the book, I went for a wander one day and just went sprayed all over the place and, and I forgot all about it. And then one day I walked around the paddock and I just followed where I'd walked all over the place. It was just so obvious to see where all this, you know, where yeah, it had gone where the trail to. had been. And you go, well, that's bloody amazing. That's really cool. <laughs> Let's do this some more, you know. Um, yeah. But, you know, I was noticing the worm castings in these I was going to ask you about the worm castings. Can you explain what a worm casting is? Oh, well, the, the worms go down and eat whatever they eat. I mean, yeah. they don't eat dirt. They, right. eat, they eat biology, you know, like fungal, you know, nematodes. So they eat all that shit and then they shit. <laughs> right. And that's a worm cast. Ah, oh, it's the... It's their, it's their excrement. Their excrement. Right. Yeah. Okay. So in their gut, it's, it's, all, it's all getting ground up and it's all biology and it's all been laid down. So now we have a nutrient pile. And you just think about it. I mean, people explain worms to me as the whales of the soil. Like hmm. they're the big guys. Okay. Because they go down there and they eat everybody up and they're the last in the life cycle sort of thing. Right. And I get to understand that process. But what I have come to grips with is they love cyanobacteria hmm. they love it it's like going to the chinese smorgasbord let's have it wow and, and so the biggest indication is when you get cyanobacteria functioning properly you'll have worm castings i mean you'll have worm castings like you've never seen before like specifically specifically from about april on more may june when it's moist enough and all the biological functions working properly um, I've, I've had up to 15 millimetres, 15 to 20 millimetres of worm castings across the whole paddock. I mean, thick, like 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 that, mm. across the whole paddock. It's just worm casting. And you put the stock in the paddock and you think, oh, my God, look at the mess we've made. And it's just them trampling down all the worm castings. A couple of days later in a shower of rain, and all of a sudden everything's green. And it's like, oh, shit, what happened? Mm. And in the springtime, what happened from that was all these little fine feeder roots come up on the surface to get the nutrient out of the worm castings. Keen to dive deeper? Check out our audiobook and Eco Farmers Discovery on Spotify or grab our free ebook, The Six Things You Need to Improve Soil and Farm Profit. Links in the description.